Hi everyone, welcome back. Uh, this is chapter two in our read aloud of Finders Keepers, the book that I wrote. It's probably been 10 years, so that's incredible to me. Um, when we last left off from chapter one, uh, Krista and her family, her dad, her mom, and her sister Amelia have gone to Hayward, Wisconsin for their cabin for the summer. And she has just met Alex, the boy next door, who turns out is the grandson of the very grumpy neighbor who happens to own a pizza restaurant in that town. All right, so chapter two is called Chase True Good and the New Old Amelia. Alex turned out to be the new version of the old Amelia who used to play with me. It was his idea to meet the next day, but it was my idea to climb Mount Everest. We met on the side of the hill by Mr. Edmund Clark's house. Alex sat in the grass and stuck out his foot. Do mine first, he said. I took a fork and duct tape from my bag. I pressed the fork handle flat against the bottom of his shoe, leaving the tines sticking out past his toes. Hold it, I said. While he held the fork in place, I tore off a long piece of duct tape and wrapped the fork tightly to his shoe. Presto, I said, ice, cl ice climbing boots with spikes. I made his other shoe into spike boots, and then he did mine. A few years ago, Amelia and I had play climbed Mount Everest in a park near our house. That was when she used to play with me. When Amelia was Pocahontas helping Lewis and Clark, I was Pocahontas's little sister. I was also the little sister of Sally Ride and Marie Curry and the people we invented, like Jade Truegood and her sister Chase. But Amelia became a princess when she turned 14. One day, Amelia, my sister, was plucking legs off a daddy long leg spider to see if it'd roll around with just a body. Yeah, it does. Then practically overnight, Amelia, my sister, vanished and Amelia the princess was in her place. Amelia the princess screamed at bugs and begged for manicures and pierced ears. I thought she'd be less royal at the cabin, but last summer she just watched movies and read romance novels and texted her friends. She'd sit on the dock and watch me swim only because she wanted a tan. But she wouldn't play at all. My dad felt bad for me. He tried to play shipwreck and shark hunters, but he wasn't very good. It's not fun to play with someone who's constantly, constantly yelling, be careful. Fast forward through the school year. Before we started packing for the cabin, Amelia made the biggest stink about leaving. She stomped around and cried about missing her friends and our parents ruining her life. I overheard the whole thing. She listed all the things she didn't want to do. She didn't want to swim or fish. She didn't want to look for night crawlers in the rain. She didn't want to have bonfires. And then she said it. Another whole summer with just Krista? I'll go crazy. Dad told her she was a role model and that I looked up to her. I was too mad to listen. I went to my bedroom and punched my pillows. Amelia was stupid. She had it backward. She was gonna drive me crazy with her hair tossing and lip glossing. Worst thing of all, her phone. Her stupid, dumb, stupid, dumb, 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 stupid, stupid, stupid phone. Who needed a sister? Not me. Alex didn't have a phone for texting or long hair for tossing. Alex thought pretend climbing Mount Everest was a brilliant way to spend a summer morning. While I emptied out the bag on Mr. Edmund Clark's hill, Alex picked through items with a smile on his face. Cassette tapes? Cool, he said. My parents threw out a bunch of these when we moved. I put one of the cassettes in my palm and spoke into it. Roger that, base camp. See, it's a walkie-talkie. And the oven mitts? They're climbing gloves. We don't keep winter stuff at the cabin, but these will work. Cool, he said and we were ready for Mount Everest. Now throughout the book, Alex and uh, Krista take on two sort of role-playing characters. Krista calls herself, herself um, Chase True Good, 
Amelia used to be Chase's older sister, Jade Truegood, and Alex pretends to be Buck Punch, and they are both big adventurers. So this is their scene. They are climbing the deadly Mount Everest. The adventure, the first kids to scale Mount Everest. The place, Mount Everest, which is actually the big hill next to the Clark's house. The characters, Chase Truegood and Buck Punch. The wardrobe and pops, oxygen masks, which are plastic cups with rubber bands. Ice picks, which are forks and butter knives. Boot spikes, which are forks duct taped to shoe bottoms. Mittens, which are oven mitts. Walkie talkies, the old cassette tapes, and rope is rope. Chase, Truegood, and Buck Punch have survived many adventures, but Mount Everest may be their last. Known as Killer Mountain, Everest's steep cliffs and bottomless ravines lure climbers like buckets of worms who are fishermen. Climbers rarely make it to the top. Chase's sister, Jade, a once famous mountain climber failed to scale Mount, scale Mount Everest despite trying 100 times. The embarrassment actually forced her to retire. Luckily, Jay didn't die on the mountain like thousands of others, 2,000 victims to be exact. Might Chase and Buck bring the total to 2,002? The team pulled themselves up a sheer wall of ice with handheld picks and spiked shoes, grunting and groaning from exhaustion. Urf. Buck could barely speak. Radio base camp. Ask how much time before the blizzard hits. Talking nearly stole his last bit of energy. He breathed through the oxygen mask and spoke with a scratchy voice. Chase, your tank's empty. Mine, mine's almost gone. Chase mumbled into the walkie-talkie and repeated the news to Buck. Base camp says we have two hours to reach Whitefish Peak and get back to camp, and the temperature has fallen to 300 below zero. Base camp says we must return now or die. Buck said, we sort we would do this or die trying, but maybe we should turn back. Chase's neck was so cold she could barely nod. Buck held up his mitten-covered hands, using the last milligram of energy to shout, My fingers, they're frozen! It turned out to be a near-fatal mistake. In lifting his hands, Buck dropped both of his hand spikes, which he needed to pull himself to Whitefish Peak. Chase shouted, Hang on to the rope! Kick the ice until your boot spikes lock in! That'll hold you! Buck tossed his oxygen tank to Chase. I'll need this. No, we'll share it. She spiked closer to Buck. This sideways spike lunge was the single most dangerous move in mountain climbing. Buck, we've climbed mountains without oxygen before, she said. We will never give up. Never give up what's important to you, Buck. Never, ever. I broke my foot in the avalanche this morning. I didn't want to say. Buck gasped. He put the oxygen mask to Chase's nose while his eyes drooped shut. Chase, come on without me. No, dying Chase, go. Go live our dream. Buck flopped and then log rolled down the ice, down where they'd escaped the avalanche, down into a dark hole. Krista Boyd Adams, how many times do I have to shout? Mom was standing by her picnic table near the cabin door and her arms were crossed. What? I can't hear you. Come home for lunch. Mom always ruined fun with food. I yelled, now? Now. I'm not hungry. Stop shouting and get over here. I'm not telling you again. Can Alex eat with us? Krista, stop shouting and come here and talk to me. I was just about to ask for 10 more minutes when Alex said, we're having tacos like the ones you buy in Arizona and chips and cookies. Mom, can I eat with Alex? No, we're going to town. Hurry up. Fine. We scooted down the hill on our butts and I told Alex, when I get back, we can go into the woods and climb my favorite tree. Alex said, there weren't trees where I used to live, but my friends and I could climb a skyscraper if we wanted. I'm not afraid of heights at all. I studied his face and said, you're totally afraid of heights, aren't you? I am not. I heard a cough and a snort. Mr. Edmund Clark. 
was walking slowly from the shore toward his shed. He had his fishing pole in one hand and a net in the other. It looked like he'd caught a couple of nice sized perch. And in all those years at the cabin, we'd only seen him fishing or working at his restaurant. Sometimes we'd be racing across the lake in our speedboat and he'd be fishing from his boat in the cove at the lake's east end. Dad would slow down so our waves wouldn't interfere with his fishing. Mr. Edmund Clark did not like his boat to be rocked. If he lived in a condo and made salad all day, I'd understand why he was an old crab, but he was surrounded by trees and water and pepperoni. How could someone with his own pizza business and a house on a lake, even if it was an old house, be so crumpy? I asked Alex. Does he ever smile? Alex thought about it. Well, Dad told me not to expect hugs and kisses. He didn't say anything about smiles. My grandparents hug me all the time. They even hug Amelia. Alex said, until we moved here, I'd only seen my grandpa a few times. That was strange. My grandparents lived in Florida and we talked on the internet every week. And we saw them at least four times a year, sometimes more. And they gave me presents and candy and called me Angel, which made Amelia snort. By the looks of it, they were a lot younger than Alex's grandpa too. His face was so wrinkly, it made a raisin look like a grape. My grandma had just a few wrinkles, which she called her smile lines. If Mr. Clark hardly ever saw Alex, if he didn't have a grandchild for presents and hugs, then his wrinkles, they definitely weren't from smiles. Krista, mom's voice cut through the air. I said now, and I mean now. When I stood up, my feet wouldn't bend because of the forks taped to my shoes. I had to keep my legs straight and wide while I walked, which made me walk like a pair of scissors. I could hear Alex laughing. Mr. Edmund Clark stopped and looked at me. What in the name of shoes are you doing? I didn't answer, just scissored across the driveway as fast as I could. Thanks for hanging on and coming back for chapter two. We'll post chapter three um, tomorrow. And um, I guess as a YouTube person, you're supposed to say like and subscribe to our channel. So please do uh, let other um, parents with kids this age know that we're doing this read aloud that they can find all of the chapters online and um, it's something for their kids to enjoy. Don't forget if you have any questions about the book, about writing, about the library, you can make a note, um, I believe, on our YouTube page. You can Facebook message me um, or email me at s2gis at hudsonpubliclibrary.org. That's S-T-O-U-G-A-S. See you soon. Bye.